Hey guys, so today I'm going to tell you about what I believe Alpha Investments end game is. And I'm going to add my own experiences from opening my own store. So initially I opened a store in December of 2017. We had hired our first employee. She did make several magic videos. She was let go for uh, misbehavior. I guess that would be the best way I would put it. But uh, we had employees, we had a retail space uh, that was not bad in terms of size. Our current office is 3,500 square feet. For the Magic Store, it was just the front reception, about 800 square feet. And the rest of it was a marketing building where we would just do marketing. So we would have a front desk person, which we had hired at the time. She would either be making videos, he or she, but this time it turned out to be a she, would be making videos, they would sell stuff to customers, there would be no room to really play, we would not be a WPN store, and we would just do magic. We would just only do magic and anime figures. So the anime figures are not that profitable as well, but that's another video that you guys won't watch. So when... That model happened during the time that Rudy was very open with his model. And his model, uh, there are no employees. There, are, there is no play space. It's only buy, buy, buy and sell at e online. So it's like a warehouse. It's an online warehouse that has physical space, but only because you can have that space to meet people. And that's my model now. I don't have an employee from Magic the Gathering uh, for mtgline.com. I do not have a full-time employee, although my do my current workers, they do help whenever they have time and whenever they feel like they need a break. But we just use, I use the physical space to just buy collections. I will show you another collection I purchased. It was $480. It was 26 loose boosters of Innistrad. I forgot how beautiful that Lily Honor booster pack is. And when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I, I need this. Um, it was um, a sealed case of uh, Return to Ravnica Event decks, which has uh, one of the decks has Vexing Devil. So I, that's why I got it. I was like, all right, that's pretty good. Um, and it was uh, a bunch of other cards, singles, buy list. Um, we offered the best buy list. So we matched anyone's buy list online. And that creates some kind of weird scenarios where we do pay actually higher than TCG mids for some cards. But... I mean, it's kind of a speculation and we do have the resources to continue. I wanted to make this video because I saw his uh, Fate Apocalypse and that is on Netflix. It is one of my, you guys know I spend a lot of money on Fate. Uh, Fate Grand Order. I love Fate. I have Fate Action Figures. I have Saber Bride, uh, which is probably one of the most expensive Saber figures or Fate figures you can buy. Uh, it's the 10 year anniversary Saber Bride, and I was very good. I was very happy to get that. I have other Sabres. I have Morgana. I got I got them all. Um, <laughs> if you're a female Saber from Fate Grant Fate, I'd probably have a figure of you and are you in the game. So, oh, actually, I don't have Tomono Lance. I don't, I've never really liked Tomono. Uh, I don't know why, but I just didn't like her. She's probably my least. Uh, favorite saber or not least favorite female character in fate big fan of ryan though lots of alters of ryan lots of play mats lots of card magic cards altered as ryan so he's opening this and it's very clear that he's never watched this before i don't think rudy's uh i mean rudy's buying buddy fight and pokemon and exodus and definitely he's purchasing force of will a ton right he supposedly has purchased a million dollars in force of will and I wonder, like, why is this the case? Like, so I get his store model. It works well for me. The store model is very simple. Sell stuff online and then have a physical location to meet people so they can sell you their stuff. And it's working really well. I'm getting a lot of interest. I've been buying a ton of stuff. Um, I'm overpaying for it, but that's okay in the beginning because I want to build a reputation. I want everyone in Houston with a great collection to come to me to sell me their stuff. And to do so, I need to pay, you know, I need to get my name out there and have people contact me and et cetera. 
So I'm paying over what most stores, definitely over what any store in Houston is paying by probably 25% or more. And that's part of my strategy. Uh, so Rudy has his reputation on YouTube. He has his Patreon money, but he's able to buy these really amazing collections at huge margins because he's known. He's a known quantity and he'll pay you, I suppose, in cash, right? I pay in cash. So that's that business model is very understandable. No WPN. Uh, you don't want to be at risk of upsetting them. Um, and just using the no employees, no FNM, no PTQs, none of this stuff. And I get asked a lot by um, people, hey, do you have an event? I would love to go to an event. And it's like, yeah, we could hold an event, but we would have to open up the marketing area. And that area has lots of expensive electronics. Um, so there's a reception and then there's the actual working office. And the reception just sells magic cards or anime figures at this time. Um, and then the marketing office, we don't meet our clients here anyway. We still have our downtown office for uh, a few months more. And that's where we meet the clients. So the, the humble office is really just to hang out and do work. So the other question I have is why is Rudy like pushing all these other cards when he knows? So it's the same with YouTube. If he knows a video on Pokemon will get one tenth the views and likes and comments as a video of him doing the same thing with a magic box. And the magic box is the same amount as the Pokemon box. Why wouldn't he just open more magic boxes? Why is he pushing the force of will? Like he's made a huge investment in that game. Why is he push why does he have a case of fate apocalypse when he doesn't play fate? He doesn't know any of these characters. So one of the things he was doing was he was uh, he opened a card. It was Ooh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, it was a Greek... God, I, I've been so long since I watched uh, Fate Apocalypse. Um, hmm. It was Rider of Black, I want to say. Rider of Black. Um, and... God, he had a movie. I'm I just blanking on his name. He, Troy. Like, he was in Troy. Achilles. It was Achilles. So he opens Achilles... He uh, reads the SR as secret rare. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy. <laughs> and it's not, a fan. I mean, again, he doesn't play Weiss. He doesn't watch the anime. He, he should know that this is not like a super popular character in the anime. And it wouldn't be the secret rare, right? You're going to get uh, Morgana as a secret rare or something. You're going to get, you're going to get one of the females as a secret rare. Uh, John, John the Auk, right? So be a secret rare, but not, this, not Achilles. And... The SR actually stands for super rare, which is not as good. So we have like a situation where like I'm watching the video and as someone who has Weiss and I own lots of Weiss products, as you have seen in previous videos, very expensive cards. Um, I own a $250 Weiss card, One, a single Weiss card, $250. Yeah, and I own it. It's, I think, the most expensive Weiss card right now. And I'm like, oh, why is he like make a? Why is he making videos of this? Um, because he easily could not. He easily could have just posted another like, magic video rant or something, and they would get ten times as many views. And B, why is he so invested in non magic games like Pokemon and Bushy Road? And um, it comes down to margins. Um, boxes cost seventy eight dollars now for my distributor. I can't sell them for over ninety locally because the market is so aggressive. If I sell it for over 90, I'm just going to get hammered. Um, what's going to happen is then I'll just get angry customers. They feel ripped off. Like uh, you have to understand the margins of magic are non-existent. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when I look at these older stores, they still have Dragon Maze. They still have Pharaohs and Journey to Nyx. And uh, they just still have boxes of this inventory. That's all dead cash flow. There's no cash flow. But for this type of stuff, and I do, I'll openly say, I know he buys some stuff from David Adams. I know his Karns of Tarkir's binders are from David Adams. I know his Nightmare from Christmas, his Dragon Ball Z. Um, I know all of this stuff because I buy it from the same, I probably send the same email address. We probably send this orders to the same dude um, on David Adams. There's a special dude that gives you more discounts, but he's got to like ask or I don't know what his role is, but you have to email him. Uh, for extra discounts and you know it's kind of funny um because his business model is very successful 
and it is the future of the card gaming. And for a long time, I couldn't figure out why is he doing like why is he buying Fate Apocalypse when and why is, when when he doesn't know what like a the secret rares will have will be super impressive looking. They'll be aut autographed, quote autographed, and they'll have like you know different unique like it'll be like it's not going to be Achilles, right? Sr. It's not going to be Achilles, and. Why is he like investing so much in Force of Will? Why is he doing this? Why he's doing that? It's because there's no money in Magic. There's none. Like, there's just no money in buying a new Magic box and hoping to make ten dollars if you're lucky off the box. And if you don't make ten dollars, and you will lose your eighty dollars uh, in cash flow, and the box will just sit there until you know Dragon Maze will sit there forever, right? Uh, the same can be said about Corset. Corset is a terrible expected value. Like, it's just really awful. Um, there's nothing I can say about that except, man, they killed Corset. I mean, this is one way to do it, right? Just make people, just give someone, give everyone, like, a really... Th and, like, let's say if they didn't have Crucible in the set. Like, what, what, what would the set look like there? Then, like, it, it just would look so ugly. And the whole Nexus of Fate, the one good card in the set... You cannot get from opening the booster box itself. So he's heavily invested in Buddy Fight. Um, so I don't play Buddy Fight, but I play the sister game Card Fight Vanguard. And I'm sitting on lot at Card Fight Vanguard right now because you can buy it for like five cents on a dollar. And the worst case scenario is you can just have a fun draft. So, so it's about affordability. Magic is not affordable. And I've seen this time and time again where people want me to sell boxes for them for 80 or 85 because they see it online. Uh, they see it for like $80 a box and then they pay shipping. They're like, oh, why can't you sell me a box for 80 and you know, we'll get rid of the shipping. And it's like, that's not how it works. There's time that you have to put in. There is a gamble. Um, I, I remember a time where you could buy an Innistrad box for a hundred bucks, and then now it's four hundred bucks. New Phyrexia is four hundred bucks. That's not happening. Um, so, in the past, when the owner couldn't sell a box to Innistrad uh, initially, it would eventually sell because that box would just be so valuable later on that someone's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll pay a hundred dollars for that box because that box is worth four hundred dollars, of course." But the store owner at that time can charge more money then. Um, I'm only interested in old boxes. The whole WPN model just makes me sick to my stomach. It's like they want stores to go bankrupt. Uh, the promo suck. The prize support is non-existent. Even like pre-releases. Uh, I, I thought about should I do a pre-release because I can get these guild... You don't need to get guild packs direct. There's many ways to get guild packs. Um, I'll just put it out there. You can buy from another store. And it's quite easy. So anyway, that's my uh, opinion. And I think that's kind of a unique take on what Rudy is doing. Is that he's he's worried about the margins. And that worries me too. Because margins are closing. Um, once we hit, and we will hit $80 a box. And the customers want $80 a box. And there's somebody on Amazon or a TCG player selling it for $80 a box. You're screwed. Because um, you're screwed. Uh, I, I don't know how else to put it. Your margins are not there. Your profit mar you, you cannot tie up your cash in something that may or may not sell. But even if it does sell, at most you made, what, 8% back? That's a terrible investment. Anyway, or not investment. That's a terrible buy. Anyway, bye guys.